kidney bean shape. This is the fibrous capsule that you see on the outside here. It's the outer layer on this model. If you remember red representing oxygenated blood and blue representing deoxygenated blood, you can imagine the renal artery in red bringing oxygenated blood to and the renal vein bringing deoxygenated blood from this tissue. In addition to that, in this region of the hilus, that's the indentation point right here, you can see the ureter leading outward. And this is what would be carrying urine to the urinary bladder. From here, a little bit more of a sectional view on the bottom half here, you can see the renal cortex. Cortex means bark. Think of the bark on the outside of a trunk of a tree. That's the outer layer on the outside of the trunk of a tree. It's the outer layer here. This region here is the renal cortex all the way out here. From here inward, medially this way, that would be the renal medulla. So the medulla is inward, the cortex is out. You can see the pyramids here. Separating each of these pyramids is a renal column. This is a renal column. There'd be another renal column here. If we look at these ones down here, a little bit easier to follow just because they're sectioned off, we see the base of the pyramid and we see the apex of the pyramid. That apex is actually called the renal papilla. A papilla is a nipple-like structure. And as most of us know, the kidneys are here to quote unquote filter out our blood. Now keep in mind, there's more than filtration happening. Filtration is a very specific event that happens in the process of cleaning out our blood. There's filtration, there's reabsorption, there's secretion. But when we say the kidneys filter out our blood, most people think of it as cleaning out our blood. And when we clean out our blood, because again, you can see the blood coming in and the blood going out, what we're left with squirting out of these papilla here is urine, essentially. And that gets squirted out into a minor calyx. Here's another minor calyx. On these complete pyramids, you can see a minor calyx, minor calyx, minor calyx. When the minor calyces come together, you have a major calyx. So this would be a major calyx. Another major calyx here. This would be another major calyx here. When the major calyces come together, we are now at the renal pelvis. And then again, from there, urine is going to travel out the ureter down to the urinary bladder. Another nice thing on this model is you can see where blood flows to the tissue. Now each of these is a renal lobe. This is a lobe encompassing this pyramid and the surrounding tissue. This is a lobe here, basically from this column to this column. Here's another lobe. This would be another lobe. So what we have here in red, oxygenated blood, would be the renal artery coming in that branches to the different segments. We call these segmental arteries. At this point, when it branches again, we call it an interlobar artery because it's going in between the lobes. From there, we call them arcuate arteries. You can see it a little bit better here. Interlobar artery, arcuate arteries. Arcuate means arched, so these arch around the base of the pyramid. From there, we have interlobular arteries. Don't confuse interlobar with interlobular arteries. These are sometimes also called cortical radiate arteries because they radiate out into the cortex here. Now you can see on this model, if I bring this a little bit closer, it does tend to get more complex as it moves through the pyramid. And again, I'll show you on a different video of, of where these complexities go. But at that point, on this model, what you can see heading outward essentially would be the interlobular veins leading to the arched arcuate veins. Here's another arcuate vein. And then the interlobar vein, the segmental vein, and then the renal vein. 
So this model shows one of them having red, one of them having blue, but of course you know that they would be overlaid on top of each other. Each one would have a red and blue, so to speak, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood coming to and from the tissue. So it's oxygenated blood coming in. You can see the deoxygenated blood going out. But during this process, when we're in the smaller, more microscopic regions in here, you'll see it again somewhere else in another video, this is where we start to see the process of filtration, secretion, reabsorption. Most of us, like I said, just kind of use the term filtration. We think of the kidneys as filtering out our blood, but keep in mind it's much more than that. Thank you.